So, with every rig that I've ever made, I always make sure that it's solving a particular issue. Over the past couple of months, I've had a few drawbacks and I've decided to make this rig to rectify those issues I had on set. I'ma keep winning, winning. Ooh. I'ma keep winning, winning. You can try to save your skin. So the first thing is the base plate. Um, I put this together randomly. Um, the bottom is the is the F22, F38 release plate, and the small rig uh, base plate. Now. The one thing I've changed is the length of my, my support rod and I'll tell you why. When I go on set now and I have like a whole day shoot, usually last year I used to do half day shoots which are like 3 to 4 hours but now I have long day shoots which means I run out of battery a lot. With a longer rail I can add 2 batteries to it and now I've bought a tilted battery plate and a new Vimar battery so when I want to shoot I have two reserves so if anything goes wrong the other battery kicks in and that's the FX3 my weapon of choice still have the Falcon cage around it the Falcon cage is made with the release system that I like and another thing why I stuck to the Falcon system is because it allows me to use my top handle. So yeah that's the two batteries there now and the top handle is on. Again I've simplified the rig a bit more now. As you all know, I'm a big fan of the Ninja V. I'll clip a video on the screen there for you to go watch my thoughts on the Ninja V. Now, I've added an uh, Atomos Connect to the setup because work is getting bigger. There's requirements now for people to be working off site. So, colorists and um, video editors and all that can have access to the footage while we're recording it. There's a lot of things that I've not included on this rig because I just don't use them but the things I've added now are things that make work and life easier for me so yeah that's Atomos Connect I usually now record in um, ProRes RAW and that just up uploads straight into the to the to the cloud for um, other you know, collaborators to be able to access the data through Firm.io and I'm still using my Riveneye now that's a side handle one of the subscribers on this channel suggested that i add a side handle to the to the to the build and i have done that that's my dji mic i use that when i want redundant audio or when i'm using clip on mics and and that but when i um set off for like uh, like sit down interviews or situations where i need multiple xlr audios up to three or up to eight i tend to use the zoom h8 it's still like the old rig not much different it's just more efficient i would say and i've cut away the parts that i don't need anymore and one of the cut away is the the follow focus system the reason for this is I tend to use G Master and G lenses now. Um, before I had lots of cinema glass and I still do, but for some of most of the clown work I'm doing now, the autofocus is coming in clutch for me. Right, so now I've gone for lens and MacBook support because again I'm using heavier um, lenses now, the Sony GM135 and I'm looking to get the 51.2 as well, and these are big lenses. So I've now got a lens support and I've changed my matte box from the small rig mini matte box to the Tilta Mirage. The small rig matte box broke on me while I was shooting for my local university a few months ago and I, I realized it was 
so flimsily made. However, the the matte box from Tilter, the Mirage one, is well built and you can use dropping filters a lot easily. The Zoom H8 gives me up to seven tracks, so I take with the Zoom H8 for those sort of shoots. But on the normal run and gun, one person talking to the camera or anything else, I use the DJI wireless mic, um, which sometimes is more than enough. And I know a lot of people will be saying, yeah, there's more professional um, audio solutions that you could go for. Yes, probably. But for now, like I said, for my use case, these are just the things that work for me at the moment. That doesn't mean that can change, but for now, this is the setup. This sort of does the job for me. I'm a one man band. I just pick the camera up and carry on. And so you can see the side handle is clutched there. The, the beauty of this camera is the fact that you can rig it up and you can tear it down, you can put on a gimbal and you can use it just by itself, you can use it naked with the camera and the lens. People have been asking me, why don't you just get an FX6? Well, the reason why I didn't get the FX6 is because I cannot strip it down to the bare and be able to get the same quality of image from it with the fx3 i can strip it down put like a small lens on it and it would just look like one of those travel cameras it's quite tiny and it leaves such a small footprint and you can take it with you wherever you go that's the beauty of having something like this um and also the other reason why i like a rig is because it looks damn good who doesn't like looking at a, a well put together rig and the last reason why I like to rig up the camera is it gives me weight. Because I do a lot of um, handheld recording, sometimes you find those micro jitters when I'm holding onto the camera by itself. But with more weight, you have a more balanced or more stable footage. So yeah, if you have any suggestions, hit me up. Um, I'm always open to um, comment and um, all that stuff. Please like, subscribe and share with other people that might enjoy the content. Um, it's your boy crew and I'll see you on the next one.